this crooked game of politics here in America, the Negro, namely the race problem, integration, civil rights issues, are all nothing but tools used by the whites who call themselves liberals against another group of whites who call themselves conservatives, either to get into power or to retain power. Among whites here in America, the political teams are no longer divided into Democrats and Republicans. The whites who are now struggling for control of the American political throne are divided into liberal and conservative camps. The white liberals from both parties cross party lines to work together toward the same goal. And white conservatives from both parties do likewise. The white liberal differs from the white conservative only in one way. The liberal is more deceitful, more hypocritical than the conservative. Both want power. But the white liberal is the one who has perfected the art of posing as the Negro's friend and benefactor. And by winning the friendship and support of the Negro, the white liberal is able to use the Negro as a pawn or a weapon in this political football game that is constantly raging between the white liberals and the white conservatives. The American Negro is nothing but a political football. And the white liberals control this ball through tricks or tokenism, false promises of integration and civil rights. In this game of deceiving and using the American Negro, the white liberals have complete cooperation of the Negro Civil Rights League, who sell our people out for a few crumbs of token recognition, token gains, token progress. In the New York Tribune, in an editorial dated February the 5th, 1960, they pointed out that out of 11 million qualified Negro voters, only 2,700,000 actually take time to vote. This means that, roughly speaking, only 3 million out of the 11 million Negroes who are qualified to vote take an active part. And the remaining 8 million remain voluntarily inactive. And yet it is this small minority, the 3 million, Negro voters who help determine who will be the next president. If who will be the next president can be influenced by three million Negro voters, it is easy to see why the presidential candidates of both political parties put on such a false show with the civil rights bill and promises of integration. They must impress the three million voting Negroes who are the actual integration seekers. And if so much fuss is made over these three million integration seekers, what would the presidential candidates have to do to appease the eight million non-voting Negroes if they ever decided to become politically active? They hold the balance of power. Who are the eight million non-voting Negroes? What do they want? And why don't they vote? The three million uh, neg uh, Negro voters are the so-called middle-class Negroes, or high-class Negroes, or uppity Negroes, who are referred to by the late Howard University sociology professor E. Franklin Frazier as the black bourgeoisie who have been educated to think as patriotic individualists with no racial pride whatsoever 
who believe in and look forward to the future integrated intermarried society that is constantly being promised to them by the Negro politicians. And therefore, this integration-minded three million minorities remain an active part of the white-controlled political party. But it must never be overlooked that these three million Negro integration seekers are only a small minority of the 11 million qualified Negro voters. The 8 million non-voting Negroes are the majority, the downtrodden black masses. They have refused to vote. They've refused to take a part in politics because they reject the Uncle Tom approach of the clergy politician leadership that has been handpicked for the, for the so-called Negroes by the white man himself. This clergy politician leadership does not speak for the Negro majority. They don't speak for the black masses. They speak for the black bourgeoisie, the brainwashed, white-minded, middle-class minority, who because they are ashamed of their race, because they are ashamed of being black and don't want to be identified with black, they are seeking to lose this black identity by mixing and mingling and intermarrying and integrating with the white society. The race problem cannot be solved by listening to the white-minded, brainwashed minority. The white man must try to learn what the black majority wants. The president would be wise to try and learn what the black masses want. And the only way to find this out is by listening to the man who speaks for the black masses. And I can declare to you tonight and to the entire world that the man here in America who speaks for the majority, the downtrodden, dissatisfied black mass, is this same man who so many thousands of our people are flocking toward to see him here. This same Mr. Muhammad, who is labeled by you as a black supremacist, and as a racist, and as an extremist. If the three million Middle-class Negroes are casting their ballots for integration and intermarriage. What do the non-voting black masses who are in the majority want? Find out what the black masses want, and then perhaps America's great race problem can be solved.